Well, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Group with Global Healing Center, and tonight I uh, appreciate you guys coming on and listening to this webinar. We are going to talk about one of my favorite minerals, which is iodine. You know, all the stuff that I talk about uh, as far as detoxifying your body, keeping your body clean, which is great, addressing the root cause of disease, reactivating your body's own self-healing mechanism. You know, normally when you look at the amount of toxins that we're exposed to on a regular basis, on a daily basis, through the air, the water, the food, uh, the list goes on and on, the chemicals, the heavy metals, the pesticides, the plastics, you know, all of those are endocrine disruptors. I mean, your thyroid gland is an endocrine gland, and your thyroid produces hormones, and it needs iodine. And when you look at the amount of chemicals and heavy metals and all this stuff that's coming into the body, what happens is that the we are severely deficient in iodine and all these other chemicals, especially the halides, which are your bromine and your fluoride and your chlorine, which were put in the water supply on purpose to dumb people down in the in the early in 1940s in Germany and the chlorine in the water and the bromide in the water that has a major effect on the thyroid gland and many other uh, systems in the body so tonight I, I want to just share with everybody my notes that I've been taking uh, some of the research give everybody a history of iodine talk about what it can do uh, I don't like to use the word problem at all because I believe everything is a, for every situation that's out there there's always a solution and maybe uh, answer some questions if you have any questions just type them in and hopefully I can get to it but we will be republishing this webinar there's gonna be a lot of good information on here so hopefully you'll be able to learn a lot and be able to share a lot as well and in its natural form, really, iodine is just a gas, and it's an element. And, you know, like I said, it's in the periodic table with the halogens, which are bromine, fluorine, and chlorine. And it's a very important trace element that's required by many, many parts of our body. People just associate iodine with the thyroid gland, but really, uh, it's iodine is utilized by every single cell in the body, and it's important to get the right type and the proper type of iodine into your cells. So how was iodine developed or how was it discovered? It was actually discovered in 1811 and it was developed by, uh, discovered by a scientist who was experimenting with seaweed and he was burning the ash and he actually developed iodine. So it hasn't even been around that long. And then in 1829 there was a French physician Dr. Lugal, who created Lugal's solution, and anybody that knows about iodine out there knows and is familiar with Lugal's solution. And when he uh, discovered iodine, he discovered that bonding it to a potassium molecule made it water soluble, and it actually unlocked its antiseptic qualities and kind of stabilized it. And that's why uh, Lugal's solution is potassium iodide. <clears throat> Uh, around 1860, there was a Swiss physician that uh, found that iodine could be used to treat goiter. I mean, what, what was happening back in the uh, 1800s, you know, a goiter is nothing more than a cyst that grows on your thyroid gland. And uh, that was a very big discovery back in the 1960s because later I'm going to tell you about uh, our own research in the United States with the goiter belt that was up around Ohio and Michigan and stuff like that where people d were deficient in iodine and everybody was coming down with goiters. So, uh, in eight, like I said, in 1860 he was the one that discovered that it could be used which led to uh, multiple discoveries or links that iodine is a very important trace mineral and it can cause major problems in the body if you're deficient. In 1924, uh, which really is not that long ago, iodized salt became available in the U.S. as a means to treat goiter because they they found that there was so many goiters along that uh, western belt, Ohio, Michigan, and everything like that, and they actually did a study and they took a group of girls and gave them potassium iodide, and they took another group of, of girls and didn't give them anything, and the ones they gave the iodine to, the goiters went away. So at that time, the U.S. decided that 
we needed to add iodine into salt and make it iodized. So that was a great, you know, discovery. Although it was refined salt, which I don't, dis which I highly disagree with. I, I believe in using like a Celtic salt or my favorite, which is Himalayan crystal salt, which contains all of the minerals and the nutrients and everything that you need on a daily basis, and it even contains trace amounts of iodine. So what happened though later on is uh, they took the uh, because of heart disease, which is is also initiated with all the chemicals and fluorides and everything else in the body, and the toxic livers and the the, the toxins from coming in from all over the place. Um, they everybody started thinking that you know salt was the main cause of heart disease. So at that point they recommend people don't eat salt and it, to this day when you have heart disease and you go to the doctor they're still gonna recommend you don't eat salt. So uh, so that that caused again an iodine deficiency at that time and so they actually re, um, took the iodine and to this day you know a lot of salt doesn't even have iodine added in it anymore. Um, and then kind of another discovery which happened in 1997 was when Dr. Ghent uh, reported that he saw benefits of iodine with fibrocystic breast disease. Now that's a, if you notice it's fibrocystic breast disease because any iodine deficiency is going to cause a cystic disease somewhere. I mean the iodine is up to, up, uptaken in the body in every cell, but usually you see uh, the reproductive organs, you know, ovar polycystic ovarian disease, fibrocystic breast disease. Uh, the breasts take up a, a tremendous amount of uh, iodine, the uterus, all the gland uh, glandular systems. And uh, not only that, iodine is, is needed by the immune system because the white blood cells need iodine to fight infection. So, it's not only associating iodine with the thyroid, but more or less associating it with every single cell in the body. And we're all familiar with, you know, metabolism and how, you know, if your metabolism is slow, then you're going to have a really hard time uh, losing weight and burning fat. Or if your metabolism is fast, you're going to burn fat a lot faster. Well, when you have when you look at that you want to understand a little bit more about the thyroid so a lot of people always say what is the thyroid you know the thyroid if you if you look up here in your neck you know right at the base of your neck is a small gland and that produces metabolic hormones these hormones are what controls your energy levels the thyroid is controlled by your pituitary gland. You know, your pituitary gland also regulates hormone, testosterone, growth hormone, DHEA. I mean, your, test, your pituitary gland is a major gland, just like your pineal gland is. And also, those glands are affected with specific uh, antagonists or chlorine, fluoride, you know, fluoride especially, which, which calcifies the pineal gland. And, and, and also pre prevents iodine from being absorbed into the actual thyroid gland. But the pituitary gland actually releases thyroid stimulating hormone, which is TSH. And that lets or tells the thyroid gland to produce thyroxin, which is T4 or T3. And that's just thyroid hor hormone with four iodine uh, uh, molecules or thyroid hormone with three iodine molecules. So iodine is the base molecule of thyroid hormone and the, thy and the thyroid needs iodine to produce them. But what happens is, you know, nowadays with so much hypothyroidism going around and, and people are diagnosed with hypothyroid, they're put on Synthroid, etc. Uh, Synthroid is basically T4 and Synthroid uh, T4 is inactive you know when it's released it's inactive actually eighty percent of the T4 is activated by the liver the gallbladder the bile ducts and actually the kidney itself that's why it's necessary for the liver and gallbladder to be functioning properly because if you're on Synthroid and you can't convert that T3 or you can't I mean that T4 and you can't activate that T4 because your liver's congested it's fatty or your gallbladder's gone, or your gallbladder's congested, or you have gallstones, the bile ducts are, are messed up, then 
it's going to be hard for you to activate that T4. And you might think you're doing good. You might think that you're, you know, you're taking this Synthroid and everything else, and you're still not getting results. Uh, like I said, 80% is going to be converted in the uh, liver and the gallbladder and the bile ducts, and then you have 20% of your T4 that's going to be converted in the kidneys. Now, you know, a lot of times people are deficient in salt too, because I mean, really the body is made of 80%, 90% water. I mean, all living substances are composed of 80 to 90% water, and really the inside of our body is nothing more than salt water. So, um, if your kidneys aren't working properly and you, you, you have a real acidic pH and you're having problems, then you might also have a problem uh, converting that T4 or utilizing that T4 and get that conversion in the kidneys. Um, another mineral that's really important to look at uh, while I'm thinking about it is selenium because selenium is also necessary to convert T4 to T3. So it's important that you um, supplement or get enough selenium in your food, or if not, if you are taking an iodine supplement, to supplement with selenium. And it, you know, iodine is great to take with minerals. You really need a good array of minerals and, and pure, clean water when you take iodine, just like uh, seaweed. You know, kelp is, is supplies iodine, and what does kelp grow in? It grows in seawater. So. You know, it, it's a perfect example of how nature simulates what's really going on inside your body. So, um, just to talk about some health benefits of iodine, uh, mental retardation, you know, low IQ levels is one of the main things in children that you look at. And, you know, mothers need two to three times the amount of iodine uh, during pregnancy and this is a huge problem so if you know somebody that's pregnant or even trying to get pregnant highly recommend that you put them on a good form of iodine because it affects the fetal brain development and it affects emotional health and and many other things one of the things I like using iodine for is the fact that it helps detoxify uh, heavy metals and it makes water more soluble it helps eliminate toxic metals like mercury, lead, and then of course it also helps decalcify the pineal of fluoride and it also helps uh, detoxify other metals and detoxify the built up fluoride and bromide from the thyroid gland. So usually it, what's been reported is about 12.5 to 50 milligrams of iodine uh, will ex will uh, increase the urinary excretion of lead and mercury, and usually that happens even within 24 hours. But you know, when you're pulling metals out of the body, you want to make sure that you're very hydrated. And even when you do take iodine uh, initially, you might even go through a healing crisis. And a healing crisis is just headache and fatigue and everything, just where your body starts to to slowly eliminate all those toxins. Another benefit of iodine is it's a cofactor for insulin. So, you know, we're not talking about curing diabetes or anything like that by giving some, somebody insulin, but it is something that every diabetic person should take a look at. And whenever, good, whenever diabetics make good lifestyle changes and get enough iodine, well, most of the time their insulin functions better. Uh, another thing that people really don't know about the uh, benefits of iodine is the fact that it is a powerful antimicrobial and antiseptic. I personally take it. I barely ever get sick, you know, but my kids sometimes go to school. They're around a bunch of vaccinated children. They, you know, they're always coming down with something. The conditions over there, the air quality is bad, the, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, one of the one of the good things in, uh, about iodine, it's a great antiseptic, and it was used in the early 1800s and early 1900s for people that had any type of bacterial infection. That was basically their antibiotic is just dosing up high on iodine. And to this day, there's no bacteria, virus, uh, any type of microorganism that can survive or adapt to being in an iodine-rich environment. So it does help 
uh, to protect yourself, your immune system, from invading microorganisms. Uh, and this is another trick that my wife loves to do is iodine is incredibly good for anti-aging and the skin. If you just take some good iodine and uh, an ace and iodine and a glycerin base because glycerin is, I wouldn't do this with alcohol because alcohol is very dehydrating to the skin. But glycerin in itself, vegetable glycerin, I'm not talking about animal products, but a good USP uh, certified vegetable glycerin with the iodine in it, like the detoxidine that we that we developed. And you take a small amount and you rub it under your eyes, you know, over here by your crow's feet, you rub it on your face, any part of your skin. And it takes a while because your skin is seven layers deep and you're going to have to slowly uh, start repairing it. But if you do it for a long period of time, we've seen dramatic results. Even better than the $500 facial toxic chemical based uh, you know facial anti-aging creams that are out there which are you know nothing more than plasticizers and everything else that just fill in the wrinkles and make you think that you're looking younger but it's actually causing cancer uh, because of the toxic chemicals in that and and sunscreens as well so it's great for skin care I would highly recommend it um, you know cuts burns stuff like that it's 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 a great antiseptic so you just can't go wrong with that. Uh, another benefit of iodine is the fact that it helps to elevate the pH in the body. You know, not only myself, but you know, if you're watching this, you know something about natural medicine, and you probably searched all over the web. You've educated yourself. You know about the acid-alkyl imbalance in the body. You know that when the body becomes acid, that's when disease starts to form. You know that you, when you eat live, raw, good foods, that your body becomes alkaline, uh, and that in an alkaline environment, you're able to resist disease more. Iodine actually helps raise the pH of the body, which is another great benefit to it. Iodine, we, we, we touched on it for women's health, but I mean, it's extremely important because, it, you know, when I was seeing patients, and, you know, we have people that call all the time, mostly women, because women are, pay way more attention to their health most of the time than men do. And uh, it's a humongous problem out there with the fact that women are suffering from polycystic ovary, uh, ovary syndrome, PCOS, fibrocystic breast disease, fibromyalgia. Um, uterine fibroids, uh, any type of these cysts and these fibroids. The ovaries actually have the second highest concentration of iodine in a woman's body. You know, when they're deficient, the cysts form. So basically, if there's no iodine in the thyroid, if it's saturated with fluoride, you're not taking iodine in through the body, then the cysts form in the in the ovaries and especially around your menstrual cycles if for the ladies that are listening if your breasts become tender you definitely that's a sign that you have uh, iodine deficiency cold hands cold feet low body temperature you know if you're always cold that's another sign puffiness around the eyes is another sign a tongue you know when your tongue feels like it's too big for your mouth and you have a problem talking, that's another sign of iodine deficiency. Brain fog, low energy in the afternoon, all of these things. We'll go into some more uh, symptoms uh, uh, about that you can look for to see if you have an iodine deficiency soon. But breast tissue is also a huge sponge for iodine, and iodine is concentrated in the breast as well. It's... Uh, there was an article here that I, I wanted to read to everybody. From 1993, it was recommended that uh, women take 3,000 to 4,000 micrograms a day to promote healthy breasts. Now, that's a huge difference considering the fact that the RDA, our trusted FDA and U.S. government who gets everything right, actually says that we need 150 micrograms per day of iodine. Now, that is extremely, extremely low levels of iodine. What they, how they came up with that number was they looked at when they added iodine to, they made iodized salt, and they looked at the minimum amount of iodine that would prevent a goiter from forming. 
and that was 150 micrograms a day. Personally, now, especially with Fukushima, especially with the chemtrails, especially with all the stuff that's that's coming down on top of us, you know, the radiation, iodine, the radiation from Fukushima, the iodine, radioactive iodine 131. I mean, we need to protect and saturate our thyroid even more. I usually take, you know, 40 milligrams, which would be 40,000 micrograms, which sounds like an incredibly high number a couple times a week. But in the case of a nuclear or exposure to radioactive iodine-131, it's recommended that people take 120 milligrams uh, a day for six or seven days to protect their thyroid if they're in direct, uh, you know, proportion or direct area where they're going to be affected by that uh, radiotrophic or radioactive 131. So if a woman's thyroid or if a man's thyroid is iodine deficient, so she, her breasts, her ovaries, everything is going to be deficient. And it's no surprise that the medical literature has found correlation between thyroid disease and breast disease and subpar thyroid function and, and even the leading cause of breast cancer. You know, what really, you know, upsets me is the fact that everybody's, you, you know, going all these walks for breast cancer and all this stuff and donating all this money when they're not addressing the root cause of these problems. All they're doing is putting a Band-Aid on the symptoms and, you know, hopefully you've taken the time and effort to, to read my book, The Green Body Cleanse, because that's going to tell you about the root cause of all disease instead of just the symptoms of disease. So another thing iodine uh, deficiency can affect is the structure and the function of the breast tissue. You know, if you're breastfeeding or you're trying to get milk in there, it can also alter that. And the fact that the cystic breasts end up being very painful. And actually, you know, there's even been correlation that cystic breasts may even lead to breast cancer. Um, there was a study in 1967 by the Journal of American Medical Association that found breast cancer in mice was linked to iodine deficiency. Um, the National Health and Nutrition Survey from 1971 to 2000 showed iodine levels had dropped 50% from 1971 to the year 2000. So that is, during that time, by the way, thyroid uh, disorders, think about this. How, much, how many thyroid disorders, how much breast cancer, how much prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, all of that has increased since iodine has been taken out of everything and bromine has been replaced into it. The fact is, there's no more iodine in the soil. You know, I have this argument with people. They're like, well, I get iodine through the food I eat. No, you do not. You are deficient in iodine. After the whole world is pretty much deficient in iodine unless you live right next to the ocean and you eat seafood all day long. So there was a research that took place between 1975 and 1989, and 1,300 patients were examined with breast, breast pathology and found that iodine improved 40 to 70 percent of pain and fibrosis system, um, symptoms. That was a, a survey. There was another 1995 where histological changes in breast tissue can be reversed by iodine. And 1996 there was a study, rat studies demonstrated that iodine suppresses the formation of breast tumors. I mean, you know, 1996, breasts have a relatively large capacity for iodine uh, uptake. Iodine absorption, 1997, uh, and incorporation into tissues occurs in the same ductal epithelium as the majority of breast cancers. Over 60% of women may experience fibrocystic changes. These changes may respond to 3 to 4 milligrams a day of iodine taken for 3 to 4 months. How expensive is iodine? Not nearly expensive as having breast cancer, that's for sure. So you're telling me that the world's best scientists, you know, all this money that's going into the cure for breast cancer and all these women need to do is take three to four milligrams of iodine a day and their breast cancer is gone? I mean, it just makes no sense. So how can we ignore how vital this and how important iodine is for pregnant and nursing women too? If you're, if you're a woman, which we talked about earlier, and you're breastfeeding, I mean, even if you're pregnant, you need two to three or four times the amount of iodine than you, don't need, than you need when you're not pregnant. 
Iodine deficiency has been directly associated with miscarriages, stillbirth, preterm delivery, cognitive problems. It can impair the fetal brain development. Even mild iodine deficiency during pregnancy can be detrimental. So, I mean, iodine deficiency just is, is affecting everyone. I mean, in 1990, here's another one. In 1990, the World Health Organization estimated a third of the world population is iodine deficient, and that situation has, hasn't even improved. That was in 1990. I think that right now we're looking at 75% at least of the world's population is iodine deficient. Uh, National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, massive survey that examines current health trends. First study in the early 70s found that 2.5% of citizens were iodine deficient. Now, up to 75%. Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism warned that these numbers indicate extreme iodine deficiency and doesn't include mild deficiencies. And the reason why I'm, give, I'm actually looking and giving you these real studies is so you don't think I'm just making this up because, you know, a lot of people will look at videos sometimes and they'll be like, oh yeah, he's just saying a bunch of stuff, he's just making it up. But I wanted to actually have these studies on there and I will post all these studies too to, to the follow-up to this webinar so everybody can actually see and read and they can go track it back themselves because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out you know how easy it is to heal the body just by cleansing it cleansing it and giving the body what it needs um, you know it's just like the medical profession that tells you, you know, it's just like high cholesterol, heart disease, all that stuff. You know, every single thing that you look at, it doesn't matter what degenerative disease that you have. It's all caused by too many toxins coming in and not enough toxins coming out. Uh, there are a couple things, though, that I do want to talk about that will... Um, kind of affect and block small amounts of iodine. It's not something serious, but if you are taking uh, iodine, you want to watch out for cruciferous vegetables or eating a lot of cruciferous vegetables with the iodine like cabbage and kale because those do have goitrogenic compounds and that can block small amounts of iodine. It's probably not the biggest problem. <clears throat> Excuse me, but you do want to look out for that. And this isn't coffee, by the way. This is water. I always drink, and which is another great, easy, and inexpensive remedy, just like iodine. This is water, distilled water, with organic raw apple cider vinegar. And raw apple cider vinegar, I always put it in my water because it, it contains the mother, it contains living enzymes, everything you need and it's great it, it, it you know you get used to the taste and uh, and it's great for the body I mean it just enhances the water so uh, talking about some other endocrine gland disruptors pesticides herbicides such a big problem because most of the food these days is heavily sprayed you know, you have the genetically modified situation, then you have Roundup, which is glyphosate, which is an extremely toxic chemical, and these, these are all sprayed on the foods. Now, what happens is your endocrine glands or your hormone-producing glands are exposed to these pesticides and these chemicals. And that also causes an iodine deficiency, and it also causes the initiation of disease-causing compounds. They're endocrine disruptors. You have soy, which uh, has high estrogen in it, and so a lot of these uh, disruptors cause a malfunction in your hormones. You know, that's what we're talking about really here is, is with a lack of iodine. You're talking about disruption of hormones. Now, a couple other things that can affect iodine absorption and utilization, antidepressants. Did you know that most antidepressants and antipsychotics out there are fluoride compounds? I mean, fluoride is coming at us from every single direction, and there's a reason for that, too, because there's no money in healthy people. There's only money in sick people. So, beta blockers, birth control pills, 
estrogen mimickers, antidepressants, are those you want to look at if you're on any of those things, mostly for sure you're blocking your iodine uptake. We talked about bromine, uh, toxic halides, we talked about chlorine, we talked about fluorine. Those have the similar structure to iodine and they compete for the, for the receptor sites. So if there's fluoride going around in the bloodstream by your thyroid, whoop, it's going to take it in and it's going to be stuck right there because it's almost exactly the same as iodine is. How do you get that fluoride out? You don't. If there's iodine coming around after you take it, then the iodine will actually draw some of that out. It could take a month, two months, or whatever, even longer to bring all that, that uh, bromide and that fluoride out of your system and start replacing your thyroid with healthy iodine. There's a lot of iodine supplements out there too that are in an, in an alcohol base, but an alcohol based iodine is a endocrine disruptor and a hormone disruptor too because alcohol itself is an endocrine disruptor. And I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit later on as well. But <clears throat> you're going to find uh, bromine in all your breads. You're going to find bromine in the sodas, Mountain Dew, stuff like that. Uh, you're going to find it in a lot of processed packaged foods that are going to have bromine in there because it's a natural insecticide agent and they put it in flour to keep the bugs out of it. So you want to make sure that you switch to all the organic products, organic flours, organic breads, although I do recommend non-grains and non-GMO and try to learn more about or just read the labels and see if it has a bromine in it. But chlorine for example too, it's in the tap water, it's in all of our systems you know, uh, pools, you swim in pools, they use bromine in pools, they use chlorine in pools. They don't need to use that. I mean, there's ways to keep the water clean without poisoning it. So, I mean, we're just saturated with, the, with, with these and chlorine and the byproducts. These are all these halogens, these toxic halogens, are directly linked to birth defects, cancer, reproductive problems, sterility. Why do you think so many people are having problems getting pregnant these days? I never had a problem with people coming into my office that had been to all the top specialists in the world saying, oh, you need IVF and you need all this stuff to get pregnant. No, you don't. All you need to do is clean out your body. I put them on an intestinal cleanse, liver and gallbladder cleansing, chemical and heavy metal cleansing, parasite cleansing. Next thing you know, their body's clean. Get rid of all these chemicals that they're exposed to outside, on the inside of their home, and they're pregnant. And guess what? They have a healthy baby too because they don't have all that contaminant in there. But uh, perchlorate is another thing that we're finding in breast milk right now, which is an endocrine disruptor, and that's an industrial chemical, and it's used in rocket fuel, airbags, fireworks. It's literally contaminated areas around military bases, and it's now in the food supply. And I, you know, I, I was in the military, and my heart goes out to the military personnel that are being contaminated, uh, especially overseas with all the, the, the uranium and all the chemicals and, and that uh, the military gives to them. And I try to help them as much as I can whenever they, uh, whenever they call me up. Uh, one of the things that most people don't know is 83%. 83% of organically grown lettuce and conventional lettuce from the Southwest United States contains significant perchlorate. So that means you could be getting organic uh, lettuce and you're, you're going to be contaminated. I mean, the entire lower portion of the Colorado River is contaminated with perchlorate. And, the, and that Colorado River, the whole lower portion, provides water for 20% of the nation's crops and over 10% of the nation's livestock. 90% of the U.S. winter lettuce supply is grown in areas irrigated by this river and is grown in perchlorate rich soil which means you know you think you're eating organic but you're really not so for the water you know there's there's, there's a couple solutions you can do I mean if you have the money you can get I, I, I recommend I don't have any ties to any of these companies by the way uh, Pelican water system is pretty good to have for the whole house and you can put it in it, it's probably going to be somewhere around 10 grand but you don't even have to start with that you can look online for fluoride uh, you know under sink units uh, filtration units 
shower uh, head units that are going to take the chlorine, the fluoride, and all this stuff out. And those are just the solutions that you can do to reduce your exposure to it on a daily basis. And do not drink tap water. I mean, you know, when you go to restaurants, it might cost you a little bit more money, but just buy the spring water in a glass bottle. Do what I do, get distilled water. You can make your own distilled water. You can make five gallons of distilled water a day. With a Durastil uh, countertop distillation unit, you get the, the glass five-gallon things. And, you know, I fill up. I have, That's what we have. That's what all the employees here at the office uh, drink, distilled water. We all put apple cider vinegar in it. And we don't have any chlorine. We don't have any fluoride in the water. And we have all the healthy nutrients in there. Um. Like I was saying earlier, until the early 1970s, the, even bread contained iodine. And then for like strange reasons which we don't know about, all of a sudden bromide replaced iodine. Who knows? I don't know why. But bromine is a toxic substance and has zero nutritional value. Dr. Brownstein, who is, you know, he's like the guru on iodine. I recommend you read his books if you have, have a chance. Uh, he tested, you know, thousands and thousands of patients for iodine deficiency, and he tested them for bromine too, or broma, uh, bromide. Every single one of them tested for high bromide levels. Bromine in itself can cause hypothyroidism. Um, Whenever the bromine was introduced into the food supply and into the sodas and the soft drinks and all that stuff, the increase in hypothyroidism shot up. And, um, you know, one of the most toxic pesticides actually is methyl bromine. And then you have, you know, polybrominated biphenyl ether compounds, which are your fire retardants. Now, isn't it strange how the European Union has banned most of this stuff, but the, the United States still keeps it in the water supplies? I mean, the EU has banned fluoride. It's banned a lot of the bromine, has banned a lot of these toxic chemicals. You start seeing all the genetically modified foods being banned everywhere. You know, people here in the United States need to wake up and, and actually, you know, do something about it. I mean, people are waking up, actually. It's, it's really good. But, I mean, the public water supplies and the toothpaste, and they even have nursery water to give ki kids fluoride. I mean, people are mixing their baby waters. And even there, there's, there's medical doctors and pediatricians that are recommending people mix nursery water, which contains fluoride, in with their soy baby formulas. Fluoride, fluoridated water never prevented cavities. The largest fluoridated water study took place in the 1980s and, and involved 39,000 children. And it was determined that cities with fluoridated water had no difference in tooth decay from the cities that didn't. There are tons, there's tons of research out there on the internet that proves fluoride is damaging and that it never did anything. And the best way to avoid fluoride is just avoid all the dental products. You know, don't even have those in your house. Don't shower in the water. But the good news is iodine can help you detoxify those halides and protect your cells from the damage of fluoride and all those other compounds. So um, we knew that iodine deficiency really had uh, the cause for goiters. And we really tried in the 1920s to determine how much iodine was required. And that's what I was talking about with the goiter belt right around Akron, Ohio. And with those girls that were given potassium iodide and the other girls that were given none, and then the researchers concluded that 150 micrograms of iodine a day was necessary to prevent the goiter. They also found that that was the bare minimum to prevent severe iodine deficiency. You know, with the research that we've been doing and with all the information that we have on there, we know that, like I said, every cell in the body requires iodine. That's necessary to address. And there hasn't really been any studies out there that suggest what level of iodine is actually toxic to you. But we do know this. I thought I was going to talk about some of the, the symptoms of iodine. Here's some of the main symptoms of iodine deficiency. Number one, you might start feeling little nodules on your thyroid. That might be the beginning signs of 
a goiter forming. Mental imbalances. You know, you might start, if you have brain fog, if you're starting to, you know, feel depressed for no reason at all, all of a sudden you go from being calm to having anxiety, panic attacks, you have hypothyroidism or you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, fatigue. I mean, fatigue is one of the biggest things of iodine deficiency, usually around 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Uh, weakness, you know, you might be starting to become weak. I was talking about the tongue earlier, the cold hands and feet, the dry skin, insomnia, you can't, you're having problems sleeping at night, hair loss, you know, if you're starting to see hair loss, that's a, that can be a sign of iodine deficiency, fibrocystic breasts, ovary cysts, uh, we talked about depression, immune system problems, if you feel like you're getting sick a lot and you're not getting better, slow metabolism everybody has a hard time losing weight if you're trying different things and you can't seem to lose weight most likely you might have an iodine deficiency especially it affects your mind it just it, you know like you, you might think of something and then you forget and then you're you're still trying to uh, to think about it and you just you know you're just having a hard time you know you have those forgetful moments um, I, I get the question, you know, can you take too much iodine? And what happens when you're, it, it just really depends. I mean, you know, there's certain tests out there that you can do. One of them is the iodine loading test, and that's where you don't take any vitamins for four days. You know, your endocrinologist can do that for you. Your natural health care practitioner can do that for you. If they don't know who to send you to or don't know how to do the testing, then uh, there's plenty of people online or you you know you can find or call some different ones and basically the, you you urinate in a cup you take no vitamins for four days you urinate in a cup then you take 50 milligrams of iodine you capture the urine for the next 24 hours to see how much iodine is excreted and how much your body is absorbing you know if you put 50 in and 40 comes out you're probably saturated you know you you, you have a good iodine if you put 50 in and five comes out you're that's usually what happens with most people you're severely deficient. Um, right now, like I said, I, I, I just believe that everybody can use iodine. I, I haven't had any situation where someone's taken... I actually had a mother call me the other day with a four-year-old. She walked into the kitchen and she saw the whole bottle, one ounce of detoxidine, which is the product that we manufacture, sitting next to her four-year-old son, empty, on the floor. <clears throat> Now, I have kids, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have kids out there, too. That would be pretty shocking for me if I didn't know, you know, if I was taking an iodine supplement or something else, and I walked into the kitchen, and I saw my son sitting on the floor with a whole empty bottle next to him. And But the good news is nothing happened to the son. He probably just saturated his thyroid with iodine. He was probably iodine deficient anyway. But it just goes to show you that... Anything else, if that would have been anything else, you can take anything from a drugstore. And if you take half a bottle of aspirin, you take half a bottle of any over-the-counter thing and you will die. You know, so iodine is extremely safe and, and usually your body will um, excrete any of the leftovers that you might have. You know, there's natural foods that are also really rich in iodine. And you know, right now with the Pacific Ocean being contaminated, uh, the Atlantic is the best. If you can find seaweed from the Atlantic Ocean, that's going to be a good source of iodine. Kelp, arame, kombu, wakame. Um, seaweed, a quarter ounce of dried seaweed is about 4,500 micrograms. You know, uh, there's really not that many sources of iodine. Although I do also recommend Himalayan crystal salt. You know, when we talked about it a little bit, and you know, when you take in Himalayan crystal salt, <clears throat> you do get a little bit of iodine. And uh, it's good for you. You know, like I said, it's got 84 different minerals in it. Uh, there, there are a lot of different types of iodine supplements on the market. You know, we get that question all the time. What's the best type of iodine to take? You know, there's so many of them out there. There's colloidal iodide. There's colloidal iodine, there's Lugol's, there's super saturated potassium iodide, there's the nascent iodide, uh, iodine. Um, 
<clears throat> because of that, it led me to doing research into what is the best form of iodine. And I'm going to go over some of those things in a little while with you and the benefits and why uh, I recommend d taking an iodine in a glycerin base. But it's also important to take a look at your body and your diet in general. You know, I, we talked about avoiding soy, avoiding gluten, avoiding trans fats, junk foods, refined sugars. You know, just switch over to an organic diet. I mean, even, you know, yes, we're finding high levels of toxins and chemicals and, and stuff in organic food because we know the air is polluted and the water is polluted. And under the National Organic Program, by the way, you can water, this is crazy, you can water your crops with tap water or water from rivers like they do the Colorado River. On our farm, we have pure, clean spring water that we use to water our herbs and everything with. But it just goes to show you that it can be organic and it can be watered with tap water and still be organic. So um, <clears throat> what, I, what I wanted to go over now with you is just some of the differences because uh, you know there's different companies out there that are saying you know different things about iodine and theirs is the best and you know it's in an alcohol base and it's better than glycerin and alcohol holds more iodine and you know basically what it boils down to and I actually wrote an article about vegetable glycerin iodine versus uh, alcohol based iodine Here's the thing. For, for absorption purposes, alcohol has a drying and puckering effect that negatively affects the absorption. Glycerin, on the other hand, is completely opposite. It's a humectant, and it moisturizes and hydrates to promote iodine absorption. <coughs> Glycerin, actually, when you put it in the mouth, triggers salivation to supply the, the necessary enzymes for absorption. Alcohol doesn't. Alcohol actually dries up the saliva in the mouth, and so it's detrimental. As a preservative, glycerin and alcohol, they have different uh, preservation mechanisms. Glycerin gently encapsulates the substance and into its molecular matrix, and it preserves the characteristics of it. Alcohol has a harsh denaturing action, and it actually alters cell structure and renders vitamins, enzymes, and other beneficial constituents inert or not even any good. And you know, and anybody will tell you alcohol is, is dangerous. We talked about it being an endocrine disruptor in itself. Alcohol has a long history of being a solvent, and mostly because it's such, it has such a low cost, and a lot of people have used alcohol to make tinctures. However, glycerin, and again, I'm talking about vegetable glycerin, is a natural, non-toxic, food substance that extracts more constituents than grain alcohol. For example, if you were to do an extraction of an herb or iodine or whatever in glycerin and do it the right way, you would be able to extract probably close to 70, 80, even up to 90 percent of the constituents of that herb. If you were to do that herb in an alcohol extraction, you're going to be only extracting 40 percent of the herb's materials. Now, for me, I would want all that stuff working in unison. It's the same way with the iodine. It's not easy. You can't just put iodine crystals in glycerin because that can be extremely dangerous. We literally spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to create this production of even using some of the top physicists to be able to stabilize the iodine compounds into the matrix of the glycerin to where they're released whenever the, the free iodine is released whenever it comes in contact, a true nascent form or atomic form instead of the diatomic form, which makes it more easily uh, accessible and absorbed into the body. Glycerin is actually one of the most hungry iodine compounds in existence, and it's the solvent of choice for whoever demands it uh, the most. Another thing, it's got better micro-encapsulating properties. Alcohol, alcohol, and I'm just reading of these from actual texts. Alcohol is a harsh and rigid, uh, rigid solvent that disrupts cell membranes and DNA. Glycerin has unparalleled micro-encapsulating qualities that fully capture complete constituents and compounds in its matrix. This reduces ingredient inversion, evaporation, alcohol, 
you know, evaporates, glycerin doesn't, precipitation, and it slows redox reaction. Now, this is big because personally, I don't want my kids having alcohol or my pets for that matter. Alcohol is an intoxicant and is not appropriate for children. Children lack the enzymes necessary to convert alcohol to sugar. So alcohol is extremely dangerous for children. Functionally, glycerin is far more gentle and safe. And, you know, my kids take, you know, the iodine and the glycerin and, you know, they do great on it. Actually, it improves their brain function. And since I started giving them iodine, they've actually become smarter, retained more, have a better memory. I honestly think that my kids were, were iodine deficient too. Uh, vegetable glycerin has a good taste to it. Alcohol is horrible, has a horrible taste if it's in an iodine product. I mean, you know, it, it burns your mouth, it turns your, you know, tongue purple. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's very harsh to take. Another thing is that uh, vegetable glycerin iodine is better for people who want to maintain balanced blood sugar levels. You know, uh, people that are going through uh, AA, people that are uh, recovering alcoholics. The body metabolizes alcohol into sugar, which can aggravate by di diabetic conditions, and it can upset weight loss efforts. So glycerin converts to sugar very slowly and doesn't cause blood sugar spikes. Um, the alcohol-based iodine is, is prone to evaporation, sublimation, oxidation, and studies have demonstrated that this effect can happen as early as six months after production. Now, I'm not saying, you know, sitting here saying, buy my product, blah, 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 iodine's bad and alcohol, whatever. You know, iodine is great. You know, if you, if, you know, if you have access to iodine, no matter what, it's going to be better if you take it in whatever form it's in, except for the raw form, of course, because that's extremely dangerous. But any form of nascent iodine is going to be fairly good for your body. I'm just giving you the pros and the cons between uh, alcohol-based and vegetable glycerin-based. Um, and vegetable glycerin base, uh, base preserves the, uh, the stable uh, atomic bond longer and it doesn't break down and change over time. Uh, alcohol iodine contain, can contain ethanol, grain al alcohol, which can be made from corn, which can be genetically modified as the same alcohol in alcoholic beverages. Alcohol is toxic to the liver and can be problematic, you know, for children. Vegetable glycerin, safe for everybody. I was talking about pets, too, and, and how safe it is for pets, you know, if you want to give. Let me tell you, pets are coming down with hypothyroidism. They're coming down with the same degenerative diseases that we are because people are feeding their pets the wrong foods. They're feeding their pets all the toxic meat and everything else. And if you just type in hypothyroidism in dogs, hypothyroidism in cats, hyperthyroidism, it's most of us due to an iodine deficiency. If you have pets and that's the problem, Iodine can be a good solution for you. Just make sure you take it in a, in a, uh, a vegetable glycerin form. Also, um, iodine and glycerin's use, actually glycerin's use itself, dates back as far as the 1800s when it was used to keep wounds hydrated but free from air contact. And the Russians were known to spread a thin layer of glycerin on their face to protect their skin against the cold when they went out in the winter and the military and everything like that because their water wouldn't evaporate so they would just put a thin layer of glycerin on their skin. And it's so gentle and hydrating that it's even been used during eye surgery to keep the eyes moisturized. So uh, I know we're running out of time here. It's 8.53. We have a few more minutes. I hope that I've been able to uh, cover a lot of the information about iodine, a little bit of the history, a little bit of the uses of it. Uh, I didn't cover the fact that, um, just kind of looking in my list, phthalates and plastics, the BPA plastics have a big role to play. So try to avoid any plastics or phthalates or cooking food in plastic containers, storing it in plastic containers. Uh, during the week. We are getting a lot of questions, so what I'm going to do is uh, I would appreciate any additional feedback. You know, follow us on Facebook, go to my blog. We will post on this blog a post and probably on Facebook a list of questions and some of the answers that you guys are writing in. Let me just see if I can take a couple good ones here. Uh, one of them is, my son has hypo hypothyroid since he was 4, now 16. He's on Synthroid. 
will nascent iodine help him get off the pill? I unfortunately, I you know, I can't give medical advice, but from the feedback that we've had through uh, Dr. Brownstein's patients, the research out there, I would definitely recommend that you go and type in uh, iodine for hyperthyroidism, iodine for hypothyroidism. There's plenty of information out there. You know, let me just say this: iodine pretty much helps um, with anything. Uh, one good question, though. How soon after taking iodine does a person begin to feel the detox symptoms of fatigue? That's going to be different for everybody. It depends on your age, your weight. Uh, we've had uh, people that have taken iodine that were severely deficient that actually felt worse for two weeks. Once, once they were just detoxing. I mean, all that stuff was coming out of their system. I and mean, we just recommend drink, just drink tons of water. Avoid tap water, of course. Let your body detox naturally. Do an intestinal cleanse. Excuse me, using oxygen. Do a liver and gallbladder cleansing. You know, assist your body in its ability to eliminate toxins. But uh, over a period of two weeks or so, like I said, it just depends. But you will be feeling better eventually. And usually, the first thing that people notice is they notice their energy levels. They wake up with so much energy. And as a matter of fact, I've even had to tell people not to take iodine at night because it, it, it increases your energy so much that you might even have problems sleeping or going to bed. Um, you know, I, I've had people that have written in and said that, <clears throat> you know, they want to go out with their friends and their friends are going out to clubs till two in the morning and they don't want to drink. So they take a shot, you know, they take some B12 and then they take some iodine and uh, it just keeps them up and gives them the energy to stay up till two o'clock in the morning without having to you know, take any stimulants or do anything like that. Uh, somebody asked a question on how much apple cider vinegar do I put in my water per cup? Uh, I just, you know, I just take the bottle and pour it in, but you, you start with, let's say, eight ounces and a cap full. I actually have my vinegar right here. I use Bragg's uh, apple cider vinegar with the mother in there. I keep it right next to my desk and you know, now I'll just fill up my whole cup with water and just pour a little bit in there. But if you take a gallon of water, a gallon of distilled water, probably a tablespoon to start per gallon, but then you can work up as high as two tablespoons and, you know, just work it up to taste. I mean, apple cider vinegar does incredible things. Uh, there's over a hundred documented health benefits for organic apple cider vinegar, so I highly recommend. One of the cheapest and most effective things you can do for your health is what we're talking about right now, iodine and organic apple cider vinegar. Of course, I recommend you know cleansing the body on a regular basis too. <clears throat> uh, one question is, uh, out, is alcohol, nascent iodine, more potent? than a vegetable glycerin nascent iodine. That just depends on how much iodine is used during the manufacturing process. You know, we, we've been able, doing tests with uh, iodine and alcohol versus iodine and glycerin, we've been able to stabilize up to 7% glycerin, I mean iodine and glycerin. There's no possible way you could do that with alcohol. So glycerin will hold, you know, probably five, six times the amount of iodine than uh, than an alcohol. And as a matter of fact, we're going to actually be coming out with a stronger version um, fairly soon, <clears throat> which will provide roughly around 650 micrograms per drop of iodine. So that's going to be very effective, especially when you're talking about, you know, going with higher dosing because most of the iodine supplements out there are 450 micrograms per drop, 500 micrograms per drop, you know, but we're talking about, you know, needing 25 to 35,000 micrograms on a daily basis. You know, and it's like everything. I I always recommend cycling everything. I don't I don't like to put stuff in my body every single day so the body gets used to it. I usually do every other day. Um, you know, first period of time, the first period of time I I would recommend, you know, going for a month, let's say, of 30, 40 micrograms, I mean 30, 40 milligrams a day, 30 to 40,000 micrograms a day. But after that, you know, just taking a, you know, a few drops, a dropper full a few times a week should be sufficient as long as you're not 
you know, taking in massive amounts of chemicals and toxins and stuff like that. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming on. I hope you enjoyed the webinar tonight. And if you have any further questions, like I said, don't uh, don't hesitate to email us. Email us at social s o c i a l at globalhealingcenter.com and let us know. Social at globalhealingcenter.com. Everybody have a wonderful evening, and until next time, if you want to see another webinar and another topic, please let us know. Otherwise, be safe, be healthy.